Today, we're at NASA's Armstrong Test Facility, bringing Dream Chaser through a series of its final tests before we go to the launch site. One is a sign vibration test that simulates the environment on launch. The other is a thermal vacuum test that simulates the environment on space. Any time that you are launching and going from your launch pad up to space, uh, that takes about 90 plus seconds. And you're experiencing tons of pressure and lots of loading from almost every direction as you do that. So this is mostly to make sure that the loads and like the dynamics that we're seeing as a spacecraft aren't going to interfere with the natural frequencies and the modes that ULA sees as a launch vehicle. So ULA is our launch partner uh, and they have given us a profile to meet for their launch loads in order to ride on their rocket. Seeing this launch will be uh, just phenomenal. It took us about seven years or more to get here. Every day that we get closer, it just feels like everything's building and, and getting more exciting. NASA's vibe table here is really special. It's one of the only ones in the world that can accommodate the full Dream Chaser stack up, both in height and in weight. Getting it in this room alone was just a really big undertaking. People come in just to watch it, just go vertical for the very first time, and then also mate with our cargo module. This is the first time we've seen it in a stack configuration, and it's, it's breathtaking, you know? <laughs> this is the moment we wait for. It's incredible. So this is a uh, hydraulically actuated shaker. So it uses a, a hydraulic pump system uh, to move a very large uh, table mass. And that lets us input dynamic forces into our spacecraft to simulate the environment it's going to experience as it's riding our rocket ride up into orbit. Vibration testing is something that you do as part of what we call an environmental test suite, which generally is vibe or shock, acoustic, and then thermal vacuum that prepares you for spaceflight. And it's really checking to make sure that either your models are correlated correctly to what you're seeing on the vehicle, or it's also doing qualifying and quantifying that your subsystems and everything are both reliable and will survive space environments. We've got a lot of specific areas of the vehicle that are of interest um, in how they're going to respond as components. As the whole vehicle shakes, uh, various parts of it, like the wings, the rudder, the nose, thrusters, uh, a lot of the things that you see behind me kind of sticking out of the vehicle are going to behave differently than the vehicle itself. We like to keep an eye on those uh, and basically to, to, to monitor how they're behaving. We're checking um, in different axes, the Z axis, the Y axis. Today we ran in the Y axis, so we're actually running side to side on the vehicle, so kind of like the sweep. We have a one camera that's pointed directly at the wings behind me and then um, their proximity to the dorsal hatch, and we're actually seeing those wings vibrate and we're seeing a deflection in them and making sure that they don't make contact with anything that we don't see, you can't see with the naked eye. It happens so fast that you have to be able to have a high-speed camera to ensure that nothing gets damaged. This morning we uh, incurred some communication issues, talked with the rest of the team, and did a little bit of troubleshooting, figured it out, and uh, we we're ready to go. To so go ahead and queue up 2A. Now we're going to slay and bind. Everything looks good. We probably don't need to do our T-toggle anymore. Let's verify Siggy's real quick. Copy. Thank you. Clear to start and we are recording. Econ air and you go test. Econ is ready. And see our space. Where we go? They were ramping up in displacement. 45 hertz. Tracking very well. 65, 70, 90 hertz, 95, 100 hertz. Normal end of test. Woo! <laughs> Watching the ship shake was terrifying. <laughs> As someone who's been a part of it for so long, like actually seeing it all together and shaking, it was just the full 90 seconds I didn't breathe. After the vibe test, we will pull Dream Chaser down and get it horizontal again and transport it over to a different facility here at Armstrong for a thermal vacuum test. The TVAC chamber is uh, also a, a really special place here. It's one of the largest in the world and it will simulate the environment of space. We're gonna be uh, testing that, make sure the ship can handle the thermal vacuum of space. So when it's facing the sun, it actually gets really hot and that surface has to be able to handle the heat of 
all the radiation, all the heat that they're receiving, while the backside of it has to be able to handle the extreme cold. Because even if you're in the sun, you're going to have one side that's freezing while the other side's extremely hot. So we need to be able to certify that the vehicle is able to survive internally and externally the rigors of space. Once we're done testing here, we will prepare Dream Chaser and cargo module to be shipped to Kennedy Space Center, where we'll start the last phase of its time here on Earth, preparing for the launch. Vulcan is the one sort of reinforced the, uh, you know, the urgency of the, the fact that we're going to be launching very soon. It was very gratifying all, as well to see Vulcan have a successful launch, uh, successfully deploy their payload, um, and everything function you know, very, very well. It's difficult to be away from family, but you know, they're really proud of us and all the work that we do to make it a better place here on Earth. Working for Sierra Space and working on the Dream Chaser is the fulfillment of the entire reason I became an engineer in the first place. As soon as the ship leaves here, I'll be headed down to Kennedy myself, driving down there to do the full campaign as, until we launch. You know, I, I'm fortunate to be able to work on a spacecraft that is gonna be life-changing for the world. You know, my role is to ensure that we get this right on the first time. Three. Soon we will be two, in Florida. One. On a rocket. Go Vulcan. Go Centaur. Go Dream Chaser. And the next thing you know, we're gonna be you know, mating to the International Space Station. The sooner that we can get this into space, the sooner that we can benefit life on Earth.